Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. Stand in the place that thou art ordained to stand, says the Lord. For the church is my voice. The church is my hands. The church is me, ever present among humanity, says the Lord. No longer can we sit on the, the sidelines. No longer can we wait around for something special to happen. The Lord says begin to pursue. Begin to go after. Begin to do that which you know to do in order for my glory to be manifest in the earth, says the Lord. And I will demonstrate my glory. And I will demonstrate my power. And I will demonstrate the reality of my resurrection, says the Master. So it is the hour, it is the hour to set aside foolish things and to set aside that which is not profitable and come unto me, says the Lord. Let the freshness of my spirit energize you, saturate you, overtake you. To be vessels, meat, for the master's use. It is the hour. It is the hour, says the Lord. Look not, look not for the coming event. For the hour of the greatest glory that the church has known is upon you. And it is time. It is time. And I do release you to walk in all that I have planned, says the Lord. Great will be the reward. Great will be the ingathering from my Father. Great will be the demonstration of signs and wonders and miracles. And the affirmation of my resurrection, says the Lord Jesus. Great, great, great is the harvest, and great will be the ingathering, says the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I said hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's time to cast aside weariness. It's time to cast aside lethargicness, says the Lord. You must stir yourself up. You must lay hold of that which you know to do, to be infused with purpose and meaning in the earth. No longer can you use the excuse, it's not my time or not my responsibility or not my need to do. To do. Many have forsaken my call. Many have rejected my commands. Many have gone and sat down and withdrawn from my purposes, says the Lord. But I must have those who've not bowed their knee who've not rejected my calling, who've not set aside their God-ordained purpose to rise in this hour, to rise in this day, to rise in this moment and say, Yes, Lord, I will obey. Yes, Lord, I will do. Yes, Lord, I will go. Yes, Lord, where you want me to go, I'll go. What you want me to do, I'll do. What you want me to say, I'll say. And you'll do it with fervor. And you'll do it with zeal. And you'll do it with a command from the lips of the Master that I must obey and fulfill my purpose in the earth. So now, 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 
come aside. Come aside and walk with me, says the Lord. Walk in the Spirit. Do not fulfill the lust of the flesh, but fulfill the desires of the Spirit of the living God. The holiness and purity of the Spirit that calls you to a higher plane, that calls you to walk above the meek, meekly, weak, and cumbersome elements of the earth and walk in the realm of the supernatural, walk in the realm of glory, walk where your Father walks in the Spirit. No, I am speaking in this hour, says the head of the church. And my voice is being proclaimed through all the earth. And this morning is your call. I summon you. I summon you, says the Lord. I summon you from places that you have ventured that are out of my will. I summon you from places that you have allowed yourself to reside that are out of my will. And I summon you, says the Lord to the high calling in Christ Jesus. Your destiny must be fulfilled so that the plan of the Father will be finished and consummated and brought to its fullness and that heaven will be populated with the souls of men and women that would have otherwise missed God's call and miss God's purpose for them because you answer the call today you answer it this moment and you say yes Lord yes Lord yes Lord I will obey I will do I will go in Jesus name now lift your hands to the Lord thank him for his precious spirit thank him for his glory Thank Him for His goodness. And all together let's say, Yes, Lord. I will. I will obey. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Oh. Ha. Huh. Ha. Huh. And as you walk in your commitment, and walk in your yes to me, says the Lord, I send my times of refreshing upon your heart. Oh, by my spirit, I refresh you. Oh, as the prophet stood in the valley of dry bones and called the winds from the north, the south, and the east, and the west and said, blow over these bones, winds. And the sinews and the flesh came upon them. The bones lived. So I breathe my spirit upon you. And I refresh you, says the Lord. I bring my refreshing to your life. I bring it to your heart. To bring it to your mind and even to your body. This is the hour of a refreshing. Oh. Oh. Rabaradi zelerigale aguda daramande. I breathe on you, says the Lord. My refreshing. The winds of my spirit. The glory of my presence. And the countenance of my favor. Are upon you, says the Lord. Nongo sukro do gregi mekatada. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Oh, we give glory to the Lord. The Lord. We give glory to the Master. Hallelujah.
Ha, 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 ha. Ha, 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 ha. Glory to God. Anybody blessed? Dora Basada. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can y'all pull this off real quick? Have glories here. All oh, the glory. What is the glory? The glory is the manifest presence of the Father. The manifest presence of God. Visible in some cases, perceivable in many other cases, but the Holy Spirit is in manifestation. The glory is here. I said the glory is here. In the Old Testament, they would see mountains burn with fire. Bush, Moses saw the bush burn with fire, but did not, was not consumed. That's the glory. The priest went to the temple and could not stand up because of the glory. Because of the glory. Because of the glory. Thank you, Father, for the glory. When Moses came out of the mount, mount his face shone from just having seen the back parts of God. So bright they had to put a veil over his face. Jesus and Elijah and Moses stood on the Mount of Transfiguration. And Jesus' garments became glistening and brighter than the noonday sun because of the glory. The Master appeared to Paul on the road to Damascus. And the light was so bright of His glory, it knocked them off their horses and they could not see by reason of the glory. Humanity is looking... For the light to shine in the darkness. And no longer can we give them a pseudo gospel. No longer can we give them uh, answers that appease us in our duties. But does not liberate their hearts from bondage. No longer can we stand and say, if this is good for me and I'm happy and I'm going to heaven. While men and women go to hell. We must walk and carry forth the banner of the Lord Jesus Christ. We must walk in the glory. So the hearts of men are convicted by the presence of God yeah, upon go our get lives. Your Bibles out. We may or may not enter into the Bibles. That's all right. What we're talking about today, we're sharing, is in line with what the Spirit of God's talking about. We're on. Last week we started asking the question, the church of Acts, is it the church of today? And I think it would take a real hard look around to figure out we're not walking when the church of Acts walked. <coughs> As a general rule in the church. <clears throat> we have sold ourselves short from that which God desired. When we look at... Um, how the church of Acts operated and functioned. They were a supernatural church. Amen. They walked and, and functioned in the supernatural. But when you get, see, uh, now I don't, I don't wanna, I'm not trying to say this to hurt people, but they just came out with a study that said the millennial generation is the most useless generation in history. I even had my own son tell me he thinks our, his generation is, is just... Terrible. Because they don't care about anything. They have no vision. They have no future. As a general rule. I'm not saying everybody. I'm talking about in a general sense. And when they go to the colleges, they don't, give them, they, they don't even give them an education to do something. They just tell them how, how to demand that everybody give them something. They're walking away with nothing. At 20 grand a year. 
in many cases. <clears throat> the church left its calling to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature, to have signs and wonders follow them, and exchanged it for cool worship services. We call them worship services. A lot of it's just entertainment services. And can I, I was, let, me, let me say something on the side. If you're, if you're a Christian musician, like, like maybe like Carmen, and you go out and you put on a concert and people come out for that, it is a form of Christian entertainment. But even Carmen made it about getting saved. We come to many of our church services now, and it's about, the, it's about how you hear people talking, how great the, the worship group is. They don't care what the pastor says. As long as they, had, they got moved with some music or they had a nice light show or a nice fog show or whatever. And then when the word came, you got to give them some watered down something to appease them because they really came to hear the music. And we wonder why there's no power. We wonder why we're not walking out with a mandate from heaven to go out into the world and change the world. Amen. Now, Jesus told the disciples, I'm going to cover some ground, recover some ground. Jesus was about, about to be, tra be taken up into heaven. Remember that? He went out to the place, and they were all sitting there talking. He says, he says um, you go into Jerusalem, and you tarry there, and you'll be filled with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Uh, and he said, well, go to Jerusalem, tarry there, you'll be, uh, and, and, and until you be filled with the uh, Holy Ghost or get power from high after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you'll be witnesses in Judea, Samaria and, and other most parts of the earth. They weren't even allowed to go tell anybody about Jesus until they got Holy Ghost power all over them so they could demonstrate with signs and wonders. Amen. Now we tell them to come to church and we sing just as I am but we don't say come to Jesus just come on into the building and give your offerings and stay like you are. We offer you this cultural group and that cultural group, and we got the cooking group, and we got this group. And I'm not opposed to having stuff in church. I think it is a social community. There is a social side to the church. But when you are presenting the social side as the church, and that is what you're doing to get numbers into the building, is to have all these social uh, identities and never give them that which transforms them, you've missed the point. I believe it's good to have social interaction in the church. But the social interaction is not to be why you're in the church. You're to be in the church because you're born again. Because you're becoming a disciple of Christ. Amen. One of the largest churches in America, they say this on their website. If you're coming to this church to be discipled, you're coming to the wrong place. Because we're about getting people into the or saved or into the church, whatever. I thought, how, how great. Here's another man wisdom. Because you know what the head of the church said? He said, make disciples of all men. And you're going to have your big, ha happy, clappy church where everybody comes. And you're telling them, we're not going to make disciples. We're just going to get them saved. And they're going to like our worship. They're going to like our motivational speech on Sunday morning. You know, they're going to like this. But we're not going to disciple them. Well, then you need to get out of the building, stop calling it a church, go put up a tent, call yourself an evangelistic association, get the name of all the churches around you, and when they come to your evangelistic meeting, get saved, send them to the churches. Amen. So they can be discipled. Can't do that. The money. Got to have the money. So we got, we got to keep them coming in. But we're not going to disciple them. Jesus said disciple them. Train them. Teach them. Develop them. Raise them up. Make them, you know, um, save, the, save the lost. Trade the saved. Amen? And send, and send out the trained. That's something John Grunewald came up with. That's kind of paraphrased. It's save the lost, train the saved, and then send out the, send out the trained. To do what? Save the lost. We have got to understand. One, one, of, one of our shortcomings in the Word of Faith circles... It's so much of what we got our mind on was what was I was going to get out of it. 
And I understand that we must, God wants to minister to your need. God wants to bless your household. God wants to do things for you. But at the same time, He wants you to go do something for Him. He wants you to go in the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He wants you to be in His presence so the anointing of God is on you and the power of God's on you and the blessings of God are on you so you can go out and help people get, get free and get delivered. Amen? He did not call us to rejoice and talk about how great it is that in our church. He wants us to go share how great it is to, be, to, to know our God and get other people to come and to know our God and to be in the family of our God so they're no longer bound by Satan and his forces. That is why we're here. That is our purpose. Oh, we're, we're, you believe in Bible prosperity? I believe in Bible prosperity. Do you believe in divine healing? I believe in divine healing. Do you believe in being free? I believe in being free. I'm talking about Bible free. I can do anything I want to. Yeah, and Paul wrote to you too. He had a word for you. I got a word for Paul for you. Only use not your liberty as an occasion to the flesh. Apostle Paul. I can do whatever. I'm liberated. I can do whatever I want to. I'm walking in liberty. Yeah. And Paul said, don't use your liberty as an occasion to the flesh. People leave that scripture out all the time. It's not about, listen, thank God, we got great sermons on you can have what you say. Brother Hagin's got a book. Why? Because God knew men and women need to have their need met. They need to know how to believe God and get answers from heaven. That's why he raised him up to preach my, teach my people faith. And raise up a generation of ministers who could go teach people to live by faith. But the end of our faith is not your Cadillac. Okay, you move beyond Cadillac. You were talking about a, a Tulsa. Or a te, te, what is it? Tesla? Or a Maserati? Fiat 124 Sports Fighter? Coming out next year. Y'all want to buy a pastor present this Christmas? There you go. I believe they could probably get it in the doors of the gym. We could have a bow on it in there for. You seen what? Yeah, I know a preacher. One time, he just took water and threw it all over the congregation, and everybody that came on, got healed, and set free. And then he did it the next day, and all just got wet. Hallelujah. But the cry of the Spirit has gone out into the earth. The church is separate. And, and see, what happened was all those who got excited about all the, 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 the fleshly part of the church, they've been doing great because they're just loving their flesh. And I honestly believe that there has been a, 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 let's say it, like a depression came on the church that was trying to do right. Because people wouldn't come. People wouldn't hook up. People would leave. They'd take their money. They'd go somewhere where they could get away with everything. And they began to think, why are we doing this? Why are we living this way? Why are we doing right? Because we have an answer. We have to answer to the Master. We have to answer to the Father. We have to take the talents He gave us and go and do with them what the one with two and the one with five did in the parable. And they be not like the guy who got the one and buried it and gave back what he had. We are being called and summoned in this hour to walk in the places that men and women have rejected to walk in. That's what the Spirit was saying this morning. Thank you. They're sitting there going, how do I get it? <laughs> Wrong has creation looked for this day. Long has heaven looked for this day. It is the summing up 
in the finalization of God's redemption. Now understand, we've been redeemed by Jesus. We, he sat down at the right hand of the Father. But you got the purchased possession, the flesh. The people, all the people have been brought in. The nations still cry out. And for the first time, and, and as far as we know, our nation cries out like a, like a heathen nation for God. And we will see God work and God move and God do in America. Reinhard Bunke said he had to come to America because the cry of God was for America. Missionaries now being sent to our land. We've sent missionaries, 90% of the world's missionaries, and money came from America for, 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 for forever. But now they're having to send missionaries to America. Because the church has condoned homosexuality and lesbianism and every kind of whacked out thing there is. Just something in Canada was ruled that bestiality in most cases is, is legal. And what happens in Canada ends up coming to America eventually. They're like the, they're like, they're, they're like the pre-California stuff. Canada, California, and then comes across the nation because the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals rules it. We're, we're, it's, it's becoming crazier and crazier and crazier. And the church has gotten caught up in this whole narrative about it being so much about what they can get away with and what they can do and still go to heaven. They've lost vision They've lost their purpose and lost their calling to go and reach people for Jesus. To go and to share the gospel, to lay hands on the sick, to cast out devils, to stay full of the Holy Ghost so that when you encounter humanity in need, you have an answer. And the God of heaven has a tool. Well, God can use a donkey if he wants to. He doesn't want to. He can use a chicken. He don't want to use the chicken. He wants to use you. He can send angels. Angels came and had to tell them to go here as a man. An angel appeared and said, go look for one Simon. He prayeth. Or go look for one Simon at so-and-so's house. You Angel wouldn't even preach to him. You got to go hear Simon preach. God's, God's called you. Your neighbors don't need to see you at the pool with your Jack Daniels and your bong. And then you're going to tell them about Jesus. Hello? I see Facebook posts by friends I went to high school with that I just about roll over on. I'm not even in the grave and I'm rolling over. One minute, they've they got all kinds of tirade cuss words all over the place, and the next minute, they're talking about praise the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, calling women bees and all this kind of I mean, I'm women calling women bees and all this kind of stuff. And the next second, they're talking about, pray for me. I mean, the Lord's being good to me today. I woke up, the Lord's good. I mean, I'm thinking, what's that? Everybody looking at all the other stuff too. Hello? One minute you act like the world, next minute you want to pray the Lord. How about walking with praising the Lord all the time? Let your words be seasoned with grace. Hello? Now I know everybody misses it, everybody makes me say, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the way people are living. And God's called us. Kind of nice because we stand in one spot, isn't it, Brother Bill? <laughs> Pastor's not moving. Woo! The day of miracles has returned. Amen. God is summoning in the spirit. In faith and victory, church, here we are. We're not in that building. We're not over there. We're over here. But we're the same group of people. We have the same calling and the same destiny and the same purpose. 
As a matter of fact, we're probably going to end up moving to another area whenever it's the right time. Well, we can't stay here forever, but we may even end up on a different part of town. I saw one church, they talked about, you know, they kept moving around, not buying a building, and they kept growing because God kept moving around. Then they found the right place, but they picked up people all over town. <laughs> kind of like, we're kind of like a, a, a bus. We're at, the, we're at the, the Griffin bus stop right now for this season. Pick up a few folk, may go somewhere else. Pick up a few folk and keep growing that way. I don't know. But the thing is, we've got to reach people. You're walking by people that are going to hell. Amen? I, I don't believe in homosexuality, but you know, last night, 50, 50 people at a, at a gay bar were killed, assassinated, basically, by a terrorist in Orlando. And 53 are injured. They just went in and shot them up. Muslim went in and shot them up. Who crossed their paths to share Jesus with them? Now, I don't agree with their lifestyle. The Father doesn't agree with their lifestyle. But Jesus came to save them. Amen. Jesus came to redeem them. Yeah. Jesus came to purchase them out of that captivity and bondage. Did anybody miss the opportunities they had to share Jesus with them? I got the same response right there as I got right there. Blank. It didn't move any more than y'all moved, or vice versa. Their huma humanity is in the valley of decision. And Jesus died and shed his blood for those people. Amen. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. And Jesus came. Jesus came to shed his blood. And we need to be filling this building up. And we can pack up, move to the gym, and hold 350 people over there. And all we got to do is pay a little more money. That we, could do, we could be here in one week and over there the next. Pay the difference. And be over there instantly. And 350 people, we can, do it. We can go there right now. We take the whole building. Amen. God redeems you and God blesses you and God heals you and God prospers you, but He also calls you. And just like Esther, who was called into the earth for such a time as this, you have been called to the earth. It's such a time as this. I'm going to ask y'all something right now. Some of y'all use Facebook, social media. I resist putting some things out there that I want to say sometime. Because who am I going to affect when I say it? Am I going to affect people? Yeah, but I want to say it. Yeah. You know what y'all do? Send yourself an email. Blow off everything you want to blow off and send it to yourself. And then read it and say, that was good. I feel better. Amen. We've had Christians getting fights all over Facebook with no end, no purpose to it. Cat's guilty of it. But let me ask you, how many, how many friends do you have and are you going to affect any of them? in a way that they can't come. They won't come because of what you did. I got it right, yeah. Except remember this. You are not your own. You've been purchased with a price. You belong to the Lord. Amen. I learned my life, because I, I, I got in an argument one day with somebody years ago on Facebook. And it just went on and on and on. And I finally figured out, you can't fix stupid. But then other people start chiming in. And, they st and then everybody's in fighting this one. And, you know, and our kids went through this. They would, people they went to school with, they would be putting stuff out there, and they'd be fighting back and forth. They'd argue, 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 argue. And you know what ends up happening? Everybody out there sitting there looking at Look at these Christians. Look at them. 
Yeah, but I like it. Facebook, social media has become a disengaged way of saying things you wouldn't say it to a person to their face. There are things people say they would never say to a person to their face. Because you're disengaged. So remember, my brothers and my sisters, what you put out there in writing can travel the whole entire world instantly. So be wise. Now that's with Facebook. But be wise with your lifestyle. Because while you're in the store buying your Chardonnay, somebody that visited the church last week and got saved, who got delivered from alcohol, is three people behind you and didn't, you didn't know they were there. Twice I've gone to a grocery store to have church members buying alcohol. And you should see, and I don't say a word. Just, hey, how you doing? Good to see you. You should see. I mean, it's, it's, it's almost comical how they start acting. I mean, they start stuttering. I'm buying this for my husband. Or, you know, I mean, they're just all over the place. Yeah, they're trying to, trying to position their body between you and the, and, and the thing, the case on the counter. It's, it, it is it is. Pretty stinking funny. And I don't get up next service and preach against the evils of alcohol. But it's just funny to watch people respond. Amen. Now let me say that. I'm the pastor. I'm here to help you. But you're not going to hurt me because you bought it. I'm not going to go out and start drinking because I saw you buying wine. I'm not. I don't believe in it. I don't believe it's biblical for the, the believer to really be drinking. I just don't. I think the more scriptures against it than you can get for it. All things are lawful, and all things are not expedient. Don't forget that part. But it's not me that I'm concerned about. It is the person who, ha who has been a substance abuser, who has been an alcoholic, who's had a substance abuse problem in their life, walking in, and there you are, Mr. or Mrs. church person. And they see it. And you open a door for the devil to trick them back into a lifestyle that they've been, they have been delivered from, struggling to be delivered from, in need of being delivered from. And here you are, Mr. or Mrs. free. then your liberty has become an occasion to... We trust that you were blessed by the Word of God and the flow of the Spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address, P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.